So in this tutorial, I'm going to give you guys some tips on how you can draw complex forms in a way that's somewhat different from what I had suggested before. Now, the good thing is about drawing is that there are many different ways of approaching the same thing. And the more different routes you know, for example, you know, it's like it's like you're trying to find somewhere and the more routes you know of getting to that place, the better it is for you. Okay, so you can choose to use whatever route you choose that is most convenient at that time. So in this case, I had mentioned before about um, drawing complex forms. So for example, like, uh, you know, you have a simple form like that, right? <clears throat> and you may want to, you know, you can combine this form with several different forms, like so, right? And you can combine them to this, and you may eventually end up with something that looks like, uh, let's say we have this form at the front, like that. Say we have this surrounded form, we're gonna put this one in the front, so maybe something like that. This one we could put at the end. See, so what I'm showing you here is how you can actually, you can put this one all the way on top, right? So it's actually right here. So basically what I'm, what I'm implying is that we've created this complex form from a combination of these five simple forms. And then it's a matter of just, you know, how you do the rendering to suggest that it's, it, it, they're all attached. And that's pretty much it. And you find this very useful whenever you're drawing complex forms. Um, things that may have like an irregular shape or an organic shape, you can still conceptualize it in terms of geometric, basic, simple geometric forms. And then you can create that complex shape out of those simple things. And it's pretty useful. Um, I still use this a lot whenever I'm drawing. Uh, see, the thing is about this, though, is that you have to pay attention to, for example, how the light affects these simple forms. So, for example, if light is coming from, from the upper right, then you know that the shadow on this would be here, the shadow on this would be here. See? So it has to be consistent. And when you apply the values to this, it will also be consistent as well. And another key thing to point out is that the values, the, the, the smaller forms, are never completely closed off. See? They have to be open. Just like when you think of the, the head as a complex form and when you uh, think of the nose on top of it or the ear or so on, the lips. They're never completely closed off. And that's a key thing that you try, you should try to avoid. Never completely close off a form like that. See, because it, it, it separates it and makes it look like it's a flat shape on top of this complex form. You want to leave it open so it seems as if it merges or it, you know, it fuses into it and not as its separate entity. Now, in this tutorial, um, this is what we had discussed before, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you another technique to use when you're drawing complex forms. And I, I refer to it as to outline and sculpt, okay? And uh, it's pretty cool because it enables you to, so in, instead of a scenario like this, what you would have is you have the, the, the say for example, the silhouette of the complex shape already there like this and what you would do now is just outline the basic shapes the simple shapes see that and then you sculpt them meaning you model them you render them you bring them to life at this point see everything looks flat and two-dimensional but now by I can just draw them in and then I sculpt them out see now they become three-dimensional and how you render it is really up to you, see? But the key thing is, you keep them open. And they can even join each other, see, like this. I'm implying that this connects with this one. This is a very useful technique, and you're going to see how I'm going to apply this to uh, a drawing done by Michelangelo. And you look at, you take a good look at, like, Renaissance drawings and stuff like that, and you will see that this is a technique that they use a lot. They just outline the forms, the smaller forms, on top of the bigger form and just sculpt them to life. So you're going from flat or 2D, you're going from 2D to 3D, all right? And that's basically it. You just outline the forms. You have that, the larger form, you outline the smaller forms and then just sculpt them. And when I say sculpt them, I mean you render them as if they're three-dimensional forms. You're modeling them. So they go from being flat shapes to three-dimensional. All right, so let's see how we apply this. I'll do one in ink and one in pencil so you can actually see the, the, the ways you can treat it differently. And notice even with the ink, I wouldn't necessarily do the outline of the smaller forms in ink 
okay I would actually do it in pencil and then I would render it over in ink so you see you're approaching complex forms through different methods here I'm infusing the smaller forms into this larger form and here I'm just outlining them as flat shapes and then sculpting them modeling them all right right now I'm just going to sketch out the the outline just like I did here the outline of the complex complex shape so here I'm just going to sketch out the outline of this uh, this drawing it's a drawing by Michelangelo so I'm sure you'll be able to recognize it and then afterwards I'm just gonna draw in the smaller forms and then sculpt them and you'll see pretty much how it, you know it, it can be a very useful kind of a technique to use So here I have the outline of the, the, the larger mass, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in and just start outlining the smaller forms within it, and then you'll see how I'll sculpt it. And this is a pretty useful te technique. The, the key thing is to point out, though, is that you have to, nonetheless, still pay attention to proportion, okay? So in other words, here I can arbitrarily do it, uh, I can arbitrarily do it because I'm not paying attention necessarily to, you know, uh, any spe I'm not drawing anything specific, okay? But when you're drawing the figure, like here, you have to pay attention to, you know, proportion and anatomy and so on. So, for example, you can't just arbitrarily draw the forms where they don't belong. You have to make sure that you pay attention to anatomy and, and structure and so on. So, overall, you're still paying attention to the holistic process of drawing. Okay, nothing is, in, is ever in complete isolation. But I'm just using this as an example of showing you how you can just outline a form and sculpt it. So, I'm just going to start outlining the... Um, the the shapes and then I'll sculpt them afterwards so you can just see how I do it so I'm gonna say okay this is one see uh, there's a larger shape here it's like this is like the the scapula see I'm just outlining the shapes here outlining here you can see the 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 rib actually you can see the ribs throwing through the back see I'm just outlining them I'm drawing them as simple flat two-dimensional shapes still paying attention to anatomy okay not completely ignoring that but what I'm doing I'm just outlining the shapes as I see them so I'm going from 2d to 3d right now I'm pretending they're they're 2d they're flat there's one right here here's another one here's another one and so on you get the idea see so what you're seeing here I've just outlined these flat shapes they just look like you know little things like this <laughs> see now I am going to go in and sculpt them to life so the key thing is I have to pay attention to and I'm, I'm looking at the drawing by Michelangelo I'm thinking of where is the light source coming from and in his drawing the light source is coming from this direction okay so what does that mean? That means when I'm sculpting the forms, notice here you see them open. Where they're open is going to be towards the light. And where they're, they're mostly in shadow, like here, see where I put the hatching? That's going to be on the lower right. Upper left will be light and open. Lower right will be closed and, and showing the shadows. All right? So, and even if you look at this drawing itself, you'll see that he actually used a similar technique. Yes, as I said, it involves a lot more than just this, but you see this a lot. So you, let's just see how I'll actually start sculpting these forms to life. basically the idea so I'm essentially just going see my my pencil is actually getting um, 
rounded. I would, you know, generally I would keep sharpening my pencil as I go along. But as you can see, like the forms that I outlined, all I'm doing now is just sculpting them. And I'm, you see, so it's, I'm paying attention to the areas in shadow compared to the areas in light. So even though, it's, it's almost like even with this, look at this simple little form you have here. Even though I have this, when I start sculpting it, I'm seeing it now in terms of as three-dimensional forms. See, so that's how I'm rendering it. Like that. And the shadow would be on this side. I see, so I'm doing the same thing here. It's no longer just being a, you know, flat two-dimensional shape. Now I'm imagining the form going over. Here's the, uh, the spinal column, the, the backbone. See, that's how I'm imagining it. And I'm going around. And in these areas, I put shadow. In these areas, I put light. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the same thing. Do another example of another drawing in, um, in ink so you get an, another idea of how I would do it if I were doing it with, with, um, with pen and ink. Just sketch out the outline of it. And that will be the basis of our drawing. All right, so I've pretty much outlined all the forms here, and now I'm just going to go in and start sculpting them out. That's, that's basically the idea. So all I pretty much did was just start from the simple, you know, flat forms and then eventually just start carving them out. And it goes back to what I said, the simple, the same principle here. You have, once you have the overall, the larger mass, then you just outline the smaller forms within them. But of course, you can, as I said, you're gonna make sure that they're proportionate to each other and so on. They're, they're, if, for example, if you're drawing the figure, they have to be anatomically correct. They have to be in the right place. So if you're drawing the, the, the scapula, for example, and you're drawing the muscles on the scapula, you're drawing, you know, they have to be structurally correct and anatomically correct. But the point is, when it comes to rendering, to shading, to modeling, you can just start from, you know, outline the form and then sculpt it. 